and welcome back to Football Made Simple. After 16 years, Leeds United have made their way back into the promised land of the Premier League. Led by Bielsa, they won the league comfortably in the end last season. And as they get ready for their first league appearance, we take a look back at the tactics that El Loco used to get them back into the Premier League. And a special thanks to my Patreons for helping to make this video possible. Their support allows me to cover a broader range of teams around Europe. And if you want to consider supporting, head on over to patreon.com slash simple and you can get rewards like early access to videos and more. And if you're unable to, no problem at all, a like goes a long way. When assessing Bielsa's leads, we use stats to illustrate certain points. A great place you can get stats for your favourite teams and players is the One Football app, which is absolutely free through the sponsored link in the description below. Stylistically speaking, Bielsa is a proponent of high-speed possession football that incorporates a lot of rotations in order to disrupt the opposition's defensive lines. The focus on possession means that they average the highest possession in the championship. It is a highly specialised system requiring specific types of players in each position and as a result, 11 players played over 3 quarters of the 4140 minutes available in the championship. And he has used a variety of formations. Against teams with a two-man front line, he has used variations of a back three, including the 3-4-3 and the 3-3-3-1. But by far, his most commonly used base formation is the 4-1-4-1 with the following personnel. And with Bielsa, it will always be just that, a base formation, as the fluidity of the team begins almost instantly. But initially the formation will remain as such to ensure that the keeper on the ball has three options and forms this diamond from deep. But higher up, Bielsa likes his team to build up with the back three, as it allows good horizontal coverage of the pitch, whilst creating a new diamond higher up the pitch first. One way this can be achieved is by Dallas, the left back, tucking infield. This is particularly common in matches where opponents look to clog up the midfield, as it allows Calvin Phillips to remain as the anchor in the midfield, giving them extra numbers. It also means that Ailing can push even higher on the right to cause the overload, which explains why Leeds use the right-hand side 45% of the time. If the opponent is particularly defensive, Dallas can also push high into midfield as well, giving Leeds up to 6 in this region. The most common occurrence, however, is for Calvin Phillips to drop from his defensive midfield role into the backline, which allows the centre-backs to move into wider regions on the pitch. But this also serves several different purposes one of which is to allow both fullbacks to move up simultaneously, allowing the wingers even higher as well. It also means that if the play breaks down, they are not as vulnerable to counter-attacks in behind the fullbacks. It also forces the midfielder who was marking Phillips to make a decision. If he follows Phillips deep, it creates more space in midfield for Leeds to operate in. However, if he's not tracked at all, he now has time and space on the ball, and Phillips has an expansive passing range. Although Leeds usually play short, if space were to open up behind the defence, Phillips is comfortable looking for a more direct ball in behind the defence, completing 5.3 of 9.6 long balls per game. But we also see rotation between Pablo Hernandez and Klitsch, who often perform opposing movements with one dropping deep and the other moving into zone 14, forming more passing options. This lens leads their famed 3-3-1-3 shape when attacking. One advantage the former shape lends, however, is that in this case, Leeds can advance two central midfielders higher simultaneously to pin back the opposition midfield, potentially giving Phillips more space higher up the pitch. But in the preferred shape, Leeds can look light in the centre of the pitch, and as a result, they barely use it in the build-up. 20% compared to 45% on the right and 35% on the left. This wide play is facilitated by wide overloads, as there they have three levels of width in the shape of the centre-back, the full-back and the winger, whereas most teams usually just have a full-back and the winger in the zone. So, depending on who the opposition picks up, a different man can be free. And of course, this is also affected by players coming to support and to mark from the centre. But on both sides, we see the winger attack the fullback at times with the ball. 
but often they move into the half spaces instead, allowing the highly attacking fullbacks to overlap and to look for the cross. In fact, Leeds averaged a league high 25 crosses per game. But importantly, if given space, both wingers, Costa and Harrison, can be dangerous if they receive the ball in these regions and are not afraid to take on a man and attempt a shot. And both of these inside forwards have a fairly high goal output. But of course, they can remain wide to cause a bigger overload out wide or allow the fullback to underlap as they make runs into the box. But the role of Luke Ayling at right back can vary. If the midfield is too underloaded, he's also comfortable moving infield to assist and he has quite a good passing range, and in fact, he averages the most passes per game for the side. In fact, it is not uncommon for him to be found in central regions just outside the box looking for goal. But simultaneously, this frees up the central midfielders as well, who are happy to make attacking runs. Whilst Bamford aims to occupy the centre-back, the midfielder can then make the run beyond the forward, either through a 1-2 or a third-man run using the forward as a reference point. As a result, both Klitsch and Hernandez have high goal and assist output relatively speaking. But Leeds do not switch off in the defensive phase either. They come alive, almost always looking for the counter press. This is due to being light in midfield and having such high advanced fallback. So they then have to try and win the ball high or force the opponent long, otherwise they could be carved apart deeper. This is usually through a combination of trying to cut off available passing lanes high up the pitch and going man to man as well to apply pressure on the man on the ball. And on the occasions where they cannot win the ball high up, they drop into a 4-1-4-1 ready to move into the offensive transition. Bielsa set the championship alight with his trademark blend of high scoring, high speed possession football and will probably stick to his principles in the Premier League, which is a welcome addition. But how do you think he'll fare in the Premier League in this upcoming season? What other elements of his playing style not mentioned in the video have you noticed? Drop them down in the comments below. And a massive shout out to my Patreons for helping to make this video possible, including Pedro, Tommy, Neo Gan, Brandon Weber, Accelerator, Ruben Jarecki, Taya Latif, Conrad Kizilevitz, Kendrick Lee, and the one and only Daniel Musser. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.